So this video is for the miniature train project and I'm going to show you how to make the train stack. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the outside of our part and we're going to just kind of outline half of it and then revolve it around. And then after we create that shape, we are going to put in a counter bore for this part that's cut into our stack. So the first we're going to do is start a sketch and we're going to put on the XY plane. And I'm going to use the line tool and I'm going to change it to a center line. The reason for that is that when we do the revolve tool later on, it'll automatically select that as our center line. So we're going to make sure this is 90 degrees and our dimension for this, we want to have it go straight up and is 1.75 inches. Right. So right now it's kind of off the screen so you can't see what you're doing, so just click OK and press home on the keyboard to zoom out and then if your part was really far away like this or I don't know maybe you put it almost off the screen you just press home and it zooms in and finds your part again so very helpful little shortcut what we want to do right now is make sure we turn off center line because you don't want to make all of your line center lines just that first one use the line tool again and we're going to, I'm just going to put in rough dimensions right now. So I want one straight across, another one that's straight up, 90 degrees. And for this part, the angles I'm not going to be too careful with. And I'm going to want to zoom in at the top to make sure this actually connects. You want the little green dot right there. Okay. So what we want to do now is add in some of our dimensions. So for this bottom part, I'm going to click here and then click the center line to show you what this does. So right here it takes our dimension and does it as a diameter because it's the program's kind of assuming that because you have a center line you're going to be doing a revolve or something very similar. So we need to change our dimension for this bottom part to half an inch. And the height for this section is a quarter inch. And our height for this point right here is one and a half inches. And just to kind of straighten this out, I'm going to put the dimension here as 1.75. Okay. The other thing that you can do instead is use one of these. So horizontal or vertical constraint those line it up. So if you have a line that you meant to have vertical or horizontal, you can use that to straighten up the line and you won't have to add in extra dimensions or anything. Um, it's up to you how you want to put that in. So the next thing we need is now our width. We have all our heights in. So we want to width from there to there. And again, it turns it into a diameter. So this dimension we're going to use, it's a little hard to tell, but this one wraps around the outside too right here. So that is one and a quarter inches. And we still have one line that's green. All the other ones turn to blue, so these are all constrained. They're not going to move anywhere. The only thing that will move is this one right here. So what we want to do next is add in a dimension. I'm going to go from here to here to add in our angle. So for this, if we're looking at it, it might be a little bit hard to see what dimension you actually need for this. Um, but if you look over here, you can tell that it's going to be um, 90 degrees just because it goes here, plus and then with our dimension here, so 15. So you can see that those two together are 105 degrees and that lines it up. So when you're looking at this part right here, so if we put a dimension from here to if we did a construction line going straight up, it would do the same thing. This would be 15 degrees. So instead of adding an extra line or a construction line or anything, I just went from there for the dimension. So now we can finish our sketch and click on Revolve. And you can see how it automatically selected what we wanted for our shape and for our center line. 
So if it doesn't select that, or if you accidentally forget to turn that line into a center line, you can just click on whatever buttons you need to select the shape, and then the other one to select the line, and then just click OK. The next thing we need to do now that we have our just kind of a base shape is we need to add in this counter bore. So to do that, we need to create a sketch on the top, and we're going to put a point right at that dot right there. Okay. The reason for that is now we can use our hole tool, and because we only have one sketch, it automatically selects that sketch, and if we had more than one point, it would select all of the points, but since we have one, it automatically selects that one. We can see here in the drawing it has a nice flat bottom, so we want the flat drill point. And we have our counter bore. And now we need to pay attention to our dimensions over here for what we need to add in. Okay, and then make sure the termination is set to a distance. You don't want it to go all the way through the part. You can see from this um, section view that you can see it doesn't actually cut through. There's a gap right there. All right, so for our top part, and then let's see, this piece right here lets you know it's a counter bore, but if you just look at what the image looks like. You have a nice 90 degree angle here instead of a, um, a slanted angle. So you see the diameter, which is this one right here, is 0.875. And this depth that it's cut into is 0.375. And if we're looking at the diameter, for this part that's cut in, you can see that the diameter is 0.375. And this depth, you're going to have to kind of pay attention to what this is on here. So we have our 1.75 goes through the entire thing, but we can see that we need to subtract a little bit. And we have a quarter inch for this bottom piece. All right, and then just click OK. Now we have our nice shape. So this one is our stack. So nothing really special that we have to do to it other than that. It's a quick part. <laughs>